you're, you've been traveling for the past month nonstop promoting this film. And I just want to start with one question that uh, uh, you've traveled all over the world and, and Freddie, um, no matter what race you were, what sexuality, it just appealed to everybody. And now that you've traveled all over the world, um, w w w how can you summarize the quality that Freddie spoke to all these different nationalities and races, et cetera. You know, it's, I don't know if you can ever really articulate it. I'll, I will ha tell this, I mean, last place I was in was Tokyo, where uh, with Queen, Fred, Freddie with Queen had uh, done 50 shows, and they actually had a, a sing-along version, and I walked in, in the back, just as I did here, because I wanted to see, uh, not only see the reaction, but hear it, because of the sound in here is incredible. Uh, but, yeah, so what, a, what a phenomenal theater. Um, but the, the fans in Tokyo were singing along at, throughout all of Live Aid, and then we went to do a Q&A after, and everyone needed a translation, but they knew every word to the songs. <laughs> So I can just, I mean, that says it all, right? Yeah. Those, those songs, they pack such a punch. I mean, at surface level, you, I don't think you, you really get uh, how deep they are, but they're, they're so vast. And when he sings, he sings from every part of his soul. And it gets you, it gets me every time. When you were approached about the, the role, there, there's such complexity to this performance. Not only you have to sing, you have to dance, you have to reach to emotional points, etc. Um, what was your reaction when you were handed the role of Freddie? I, I was actually pretty elated when I... When <laughs> I, I <laughs> That was my initial reaction. I was, I, I was over the moon. I couldn't believe it. And uh, you know, I just I tried to soak it in in the moment and make sure that it wasn't a joke of some kind. But um, Graham King and Dennis O'Sullivan, our producers who had the, the rights with uh, Queen, uh, they asked me to come out from New York. And I had a, a long meeting with Graham and Dennis. And about five hours later, you know, they convinced me that I, I had the part, but in true Hollywood form, I just didn't really believe it. I went home with a, a bunch of DVDs and, and uh, biographies, and I said, is this really happening? And a, a few weeks later, as they were taking this idea to, to more studios with an actor, then they called me and said, we actually do need to see a tape of you doing something. So. <laughs> So I was kind of right about <laughs> um, And you know, and a little bit of fear, obviously, of the, the immense challenge hit me. But I thought, you know, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. And yeah, I don't sing. I, I don't play the piano. I, my body articulates itself in a, a very unique way. But I, I won't say that it's called rhythm. Uh, <laughs> And, but there's something deep down inside of me that said you got to do this and you can do it. I just thought, I, I just need time. And, and what was your approach? Um, you, know, you, you know, he's such a magnetic, bigger than life character. What, what was your instinct to, how, how do I attack this? Well, I just, it, instinctually, I, I went and started watching every concert I could, all, all of that footage. And I usually don't work that way. I usually you know, break, try to break it down psychologically and emotionally. But I thought, that can come later. I mean, this guy is going to take a while to be able to uh, attempt to embody or emulate or capture that, that great physical presence as well. And so I watched everything from all the concert footage uh, to every interview he did. And when I exhausted all of that, I started listening to radio interviews because I, th I think I could hear him be more candid in those. And this is fine, right? You can hear me from Of here. course, yeah. Um, oh, no, maybe you can't. just there pull we it go. up closer. Okay. okay. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
what was I? All the uh, interviews all, that all you the, saw. All those and interviews, now. yeah. And you can hear him the way he's sometimes asking for a gin and tonic or a tea. You can hear, you can hear when he wants to be really sweet, and then you can hear him when he wants to be needs to be very aggressive. And I started to discover the the many sides of him. Um, you see him on stage, and he walks out with a crown and cape, and he's almost this, this supernatural being. He's like a god. He's, I mean, it's it's he's a monolith, and. I had to, in some way, I think, demystify him and bring him down to earth. Because if you look at if you look at him, it's just there's no way of playing a god to me, and and he has is a rock god to me and to everybody else. But I started to think about, you know, his origin story, uh, in so to speak. I mean, here here was that kid from Zanzibar, and at such a young age, I thought about him traveling on. Uh, on a boat to go to school in a boarding school in India, and what that must have felt like, you know, t being taken away from his parents or whatever that felt like, being sent off at, at such a tender age, and you know, growing up essentially without that family structure, and then coming back at, at a very young age, and his country's in the midst of a rev revolution, and then he. He immigrates essentially to London, a young man named Far Farouk Bulsara, who, you know, had he not had a, an English education in India, would probably have a pretty heavy accent and have a very difficult life in London. And, you know, a guy who doesn't look like anybody else, who's got an unusual name and a, a very large set of teeth, uh, is is, I think, going to struggle in that environment, and especially someone who wants to sing that loudly is going, is going to have a hard time. But I, I found it so inspiring of, that he could break through all of that and get on stage, and whatever was burning inside of him, whatever he was conflicted about, his identity, his sexual identity at a time where it was so stigmatized and still is, uh, it burns inside of him. He gets out on that stage, he stands there, and he looks at everybody, and he goes, I'm going to do everything I want to do, and we're all going to do it together, no matter what country you're from, what race or religion you are. Yeah. yeah. Whatever sexuality you have, yes. Whatever you identify as, it doesn't matter. We're all collectively going to lift off of this stage and transcend one another right now and meet each other in a beautiful place. Um, yeah, beautiful.